Welcome everyone to July 2023. We're on the downside of our road to Christmas. Come on. Can you believe we made it this far? God is good, isn't he? Welcome to the Breakwater Mega Embassy Church. We're mega because we love Jesus a whole lot. And we're an embassy because we're ambassadors for Christ. And as such, we have a work to do for God. What do you say? We're not just spectators. We are participators. Jesus said this. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. John 14, 11 and 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he'll do also, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do that, for the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it, if you love me, and keep my commandments. There's power in relationship, amen? And we have work to do, and we want to do as much as we possibly can to advance the kingdom of God. <clears throat> We're also grateful because this is Fourth of July weekend, which we want to remember the fact that we are the land of the free and the home of the brave still. We have a lot to rejoice in, not only because we have the freedom to worship God here still, at least now, and we want to take advantage of that. What do you say? Yeah. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we do come before you right now because you're always working. You've never stopped working. And the works that you do, we want to do. We want to do even more than that, Lord. We want to do greater things. We pray, Father, that uh, regardless of our size, you are a God of great things. And we want to do great things, Lord, because of who you are, not because of who we are. We come before you today, Lord. We rejoice before you that we live in this time, in this country in this freedom that we have to serve you. We pray, Father, for our leaders and for this country that you would continue to bless us, that we may be a blessing to others. And as we come today, Father, we pray that cups would be turned up towards you, our hearts would be open to you, and that we would receive from you a word, strength, and healing and power, Lord, to go forth from this place, energized and encouraged to serve you in our generation. We pray, pray these things in Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. All right. If you mean it, let's stand and let's come before the Lord. <clears throat> Lift our voices and our hearts to Him.
everyone. Let's keep worshiping the Lord this morning.
the whole world see singing for the glory of the risen Lord, we just, we do need you each and every day, each and every hour, and we thank you that your Holy Spirit is with us to give us that help that we need, and we can call on that at any moment in any day. We just ask that your presence would continue to speak to us and minister to us this morning. We ask in your name, Jesus, amen. Wow, thank you, worship team. God is good, isn't he? Greet those around you, spread a little love, especially in the back. In the balcony, God bless you.
This, come here, little dog. Come here. Come here. Ah, this dog loves me. Frank and Mark and Joanne? Yes, good. Yes. No, Mark and Joanne. Mark and Joanne, yes, good. We're so happy to hear from Northern California. I know. So sweet. I was like, All right. Wait, can I got one? I got one. Is that okay there? Yeah, no problem. All right. I know, look at it, got like a family reunion going on here. Hello, hello. How's everybody doing? We're just having too good of a time here. Enjoying each other's company. To get ourselves in business. had an awesome time of worship, thanking God for what's going on here. All right, I think we're ready to get in the way here. Can you get a little more volume here? Hello? 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 Hey, Zach. Zach. Can you hear me back? Zach, Zach, Zach. Zach, Zach. Can you get a little more volume on this? A little more volume? I just want to be able to hear the sound of my own voice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Breakwater Mega Embassy Church. Fourth of July weekend. Can you believe it? Yeah. We're here celebrating our independence from the, the British. <laughs> the funny thing about it is our little country of choice, Malawi, you can see some of the pictures on here. They're also a British colony. They celebrate their independence on July 6th. So usually I'm there in Malawi for our Independence Day and their Independence Day. And I say we have something in common. We're both British colonies. I say all over the world, people are happy to be set free from... <laughs> <laughs> the British Empire. <laughs> but we're happy to, uh, to be Americans, are we not? Yeah. We're still happy to be American? Yeah. I'm happy to live here, happy to live in Redondo Beach, yeah. happy to be in this day and age of incredible technology and the ability to travel. So we're going to do a report on Africa this year. We just got back a few days ago, not too long ago. Uh, last week, we talked all about our Israel trip, and that was a lot of fun. And, and then from there, we went to Malawi. So do we have a, a little video to show? So one of the things that we do over there is a number of water well dedications. We actually visited 65 boreholes. Yeah, that's a lot. That's like at least 60,000 people has got to have their first clean water. And we learned a lot from this year visiting all of those places and getting the story of the benefits of water from people who have never had a clean cup of water in their entire life. So I'm going to share some of that with you today. 
but I think we have <clears throat> a video of one of the water wall dedications. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Kurt Dolan with Water Rose for Africa. We're high in the mountains of Mwanza District, north and east of Blantyre. And this borehole was installed 10 months ago, uh, August 13th, 2022. And we want to say a special thanks to Chad and Mandy Harris. And thank your family and friends for your continued support over the years for Water Wells for Africa. This borehole is bringing so much blessing to this community of 45 families. This is the very first borehole in this area since they moved here as a tribal group in 1965. So this is Chief Enoch. He said, we're just so happy to have this water well. Uh, they've never had clean water, never thought they'd have it. It's a dream come true. So I was talking to Endless, who's the secretary, they're getting safe water now. There's an outbreak here in Malawi of cholera and it's caused international attention, but now in this place, cholera is all over, waterborne sickness is over. I talked to all the ladies, we took a vote. How many times do you go to the clinic every month? They go at least two to five times. And it costs 3,000 kwacha for one person to take a motorcycle taxi, but they said we can't afford to do that, so we have to walk. Walk with six children, walk ourselves sick. And now they have spare money, and they're using it to start businesses. They're using it to go into the next villages and towns and buy salt and corn and oil and bringing it back here and selling it here so they get an extra income. I asked them how many girls went to school before the borehole is in here and they said you know around 30 percent but even with that they were sick at least once a month and then it would take you two or three weeks to recover so the prospect of going to school was extremely limited even if they had the very best intentions. But now they say 80% of kids, especially girls, go to school, they pay their school fees, their academic performance is improved, and all the parents agree, that's a good thing. The women have gotten together and formed their own bank so that they can do some of their own business transactions, but the men also are using the money to buy fertilizer. So they said in this 10 month period, they've already had and increased and better harvest. The school performance is amazing, the health is amazing, the sanitation and hygiene is absolutely incredible. And even more than that, they said, the women told me, they get seven to eight buckets of water a day, come anytime they want. So thank you, Chad and Mandy, Harris, thank you for your family, thank you for your friends. Just want to see the people you're helping and the difference that you're making here for God and for good. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay. I don't know. I just, I just moved in my heart because we're able to help so much and make such a great difference. And water makes every difference in the world. So I just want to set up this whole session with you with that to let you know that we did 65 of those. <laughs> yeah. And we want to do more. And next year will be our 30th year of working in Malawi, 30 years of working in Malawi, and we really believe it's going to be exponential growth. We're seeing tremendous new projects that are just flourishing right now, and also next year will be my 50-year born-again birthday, so I'm pretty happy about that. 
I know, a lot of things to celebrate. So I'm glad you're still here. I've gone for a long time, and I got to be at church every Sunday because of the technology we have, you know, through the YouTube channel that we have. So I got to listen to Randy and Art and Chris and Eden and Mondo, and I just realized that there is a theme, a common theme about our relationship with God, which fuels everything that we do, right? Without that, we have... We have nothing and we can do nothing. We abide in the vine. Anything we're able to accomplish, it's only because of what Jesus is able to pour through us. What do you say? And I love the fact that Randy talked about fleeces. Remember fleeces? Anybody remember those things? You've got to be old remember fleeces. So the reason I married Irma is because of a fleece, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, can you believe it? So I, think, I, was, I don't even think I was a Christian for a year. I heard about fleeces, and I go, I don't know if I should get married or not, you know, the whole thing. And so I said, I'm going to put out a fleece. And fleeces, he told you about Gideon, you know, you put it out there, it was supposed to be wet in the morning or something. The next day it was supposed to be dry, and that was a sign from God. So I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this cup outside, and if it says water in the morning, then I'll know I'm supposed to marry Irma. That was my fleece, right? <laughs> So I put the cup outside, and I go, you know what? What if there's no water in that cup tomorrow? I'll be pretty bummed, right? <laughs> so then I realized, well, I'd, why would I be bummed? And I go, well, I don't really need the fleece, because now I understand that I need to marry her, right? I need to ask her to marry me. And the, the funniest thing in the entire world, you know how California is, it never rains, right? That night, it rained all night. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about a sign from God. I woke up in the middle of the night just cracking up. <laughs> know what God does. <clears throat> then we had Pentecost Sunday, and we spent Pentecost in, in Jerusalem. It was so awesome. I tell you, we were just praying at the wall just, just for hours. I think we just got in a time warp. And then from there, we went down to, to Malawi, which we've been doing for, like, you know, now almost 30 years, and this team we have, this year we had at least 15 or 16 Malawians and 14 Americans, and Chris and I arrived on May 28th, a week before. Let's see, do I have any of these? I probably should turn it on. There we go, flying down. Look at that. I was so blessed because nobody in my row, so I, I feel like a first-class person. <laughs> Stretched out, I got my ears. I'm a professional sleeper and traveler. But uh, we, we got down there, and we were able to do a number of projects before the larger team came the following week and prepare. And there's endless amount of hours necessary to pull this thing off and to make it be effective. So we were able to go to a bunch of schools and do our Good News for School project, which is putting Bibles in schools as curriculum for textbooks. And we also visited eight very difficult water well dedications. And finally, when the team showed up, I don't know, this is uh, us taking a first load of Bibles out. That's Pastor Davis, who's the senior pastor of the church. And this is one of the schools that we went to, St. Louis, St. Louis Primary. We put a borehole in there two years ago. Attendance has gone up. Academic performance has improved. And the thing about the teachers there, they told us, thank you for the Bibles, but what we really want to do is get these kids saved. I go, okay, you can see the light in your face. They're so excited because we have helped resource them with what they need in order to teach through <clears throat> some of this Bible knowledge stuff. Anyway, one of the things we like to do is show the Jesus film. So we had three teams, major teams, and we were able to show the Jesus film 17 different nights in different locations to over 4,000 people. So we're in extremely remote and rural places, hard to reach. And we're really happy that we were able to show the entire life of Christ, because that's what the Jesus film is about from the Gospel of Luke, and to show it 17 times. Clothes, and I'm going, you know, that's a sign of water when you can wash clothes. That's an important advancement you know, in the community development. Then we walked all the way back up. It's a million degrees. Walked down, all past these, all past these little bricks. Look at, I'm telling you, we saw so much of Malawi this year. It's unbelievable. Uh, so many water well dedications. Just people so grateful, and schools, on and on and on. So one of the things that uh, we discovered 
One school had 1,700 kids. It was insane. It's water well dedicated. This is where they're getting their water before. And uh, in this particular area, there's a lot of Christians back up in this area who are praising God who said, God has sent you to bring us water. So we're going, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're with that. Here's my little group of kids who just follow you everywhere you go. <laughs> Check it out. And wherever you, wherever you put water wells, they start making bricks. That's a whole bunch of bricks all being dried out there. And in the background, they got stacks of bricks. You can see a pile back there. <clears throat> they need water to make bricks. They'll make them. They'll develop housing. Uh, this is another school. This is a secondary school. And they've got uh, discipleship material that we brought over. They've got some of the, the Good News Translation Bibles. They have the CEVs, the uh, contemporary English ones. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of good stuff going on over there. But the one thing I'm trying to find, look at that. Are they happy? Those are smart kids, too, right there. This is the future of Malawi right there. And we're going to pour into that. What do you say? Another sunset. Look at the happy face. You see that one? <laughs> see God smiling down on us? <laughs> I go, are you kidding me? i got to get a picture of that. <laughs> uh, so then uh, the other team, before the other team arrives, we go shopping. There's a shopping center down there. We have to, you know, we're going to be out going out for 10 days at a time with 20-some people. 28, 20, 8 to 30 people. So we got to feed them all day long. So that's a huge challenge. Menu planning, stoves and coolers and cots and mosquito nets and trucks and everything you need to, to make it happen. It's a lot of work. Fortunately, I'm an Eagle Scout and I got a lot of experience at group camps. <laughs> So it's our special room. We also bring a ton of stuff over with us. That's Chris right there. And we got, uh, you know, there's things you can't buy there, but we know what that is. So we'll, we'll bring it over with us. So we want to make sure that uh, we have everything we need because once we leave the city, there's nowhere to get anything at all. So you're talking about ma from matches to, <laughs> you know, chili con carne. So <clears throat> coffee, there you go. Got to have some coffee. So one of the, the coolest new things that happened to us this year was when we were staying at our little bread and breakfast, bed and breakfast, say that five times, uh, there was a guy there that was signing to a lady. And I go, are you kidding me? So I used to be the, the deaf pastor at Hermosa Beach Church. Did you know that? Yeah, I had a whole deaf group over there. I used to, was the pastor of that for a long time. So I learned a lot of sign language, took all my kids to... Uh, El Camino, we all learned sign language. And so I started chatting with him, and he was all exciting, all excited about it. Then anybody would actually reach out. I still remember how to finger spell, I don't remember a lot of stuff. I still know a few words, like, wow. <laughs> cool. C O O L, cool. Anyway, he was all excited. Jimmy in the middle here. So he, 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 I told him what we're doing. He says, you know, we need Bibles. I said, okay, we're going to bring you Bibles over. So we came over, and uh, Chris, Chris and I went over there, and that's Isaac and Paul, and we gave them all Bibles. So you'd think we're doing the beard thing here. You know, we all have the beards over there, but it's not as they're saying thank you. That's, that's thank you, okay? <laughs> and so what we did was we, we set it up with them to come and show the Jesus film there on our last weekend when we got back. So one of our Jesus film showings was here at the deaf church. There's like 70 people there and they're all happy. And we bought them uh, muffins and juice and we had a big party, a quiet party, but it was a big party <laughs> with them. And so we're staying in contact with Jimmy. We want to, you know, this is the, the, I think the only deaf church they said in all of Blantyre and we found them. Can you believe it? We're going to help them. What do you say? So this is wads of money. I was telling you, we're going to go down and I just, these are all stacks of quatcha right there. And that's Isaac pulling them out of boxes because, you know, you got to sneak it in and get it around. You don't want anybody to bother you. So eventually, we are going to head out. That's one of the truckloads of stuff that we're taking with us. Another one in the background. That's little Brittany Harris. And made it out to the village, get it all set up. Kayla Village, it's like... Six-hour drive. It's four hours on pavement, two hours on dirt. 
and you know at the end of the road uh, so you can see the propane you know we got to cook for everybody make sure everybody's happy uh, yeah so in the back those tarps that's the girls section over there and here's our little pantry pretty cool huh I think Martha Stewart would be proud of me <laughs> you got all kinds of they love this corn stuff so you got to have that right here and rice and so every every day you got to make this corn mush it's like grits but you know they can't live without it so we have to make it and that's pretty much the inside of the church and this church was was uh collapsed in one of the storms you can't see this but it was a beautiful night picture of the southern cross by moonlight so in my phone it looks so much better than it does here but it's an amazing picture we took a night there here's what it looks like that's the men's quarter on the that side the guys sleep and you can see the walls broken down but we're going to help repair this church this is one of the churches that we are going to repair can you see it fixed yes. can you see the vision yep. it is going to happen you know why there's no obstacles Amen. nothing in my way we're unstoppable what do you say Amen. who's going to stop us nobody Here's uh, a couple, uh, this is Paul, one of the key guys, a member of our water department, and Pastor Chilambe, who's a lifelong friend over there, pouring over our schedule for the day, every single day, because we had multiple teams going multiple places, and ch plans change, and so we have to adapt every day with what's going on over there, and get all straightened out, and know where we're going, where we're coming, how, who's coming back when, who's going how far, or who's going to show Jesus film, different teams could move around a little bit. But uh, go out and do dedications all day. You can see some of the school kids there in uniform. So I'll talk some more about that in a little bit. Here is uh, some of the schools that we went to with the Bible distribution, which uh, we did diligently and gave, you know, like I said, a lot of them out. So brought the whole school together, get the headmaster there, have a big party, celebrate uh, life and the word. This is just an indication of some of the difficult places we had to get to. We had to walk into this place. Uh, you couldn't even drive a four-wheel drive there <clears throat> to get there. Sweet ladies are so grateful. They're so happy to have visitors and so happy to have water. Uh, it's just shocking. And then a little sunset. Can't miss the sunsets. Jesus film. Show those as many as possible. Oh, I think I got to click it. Oh, it's one of my night sky shots. You'll have to see it. This is a sunrise, actually. This one here was so awesome. It's got some stars up there still. And I go, man, I'm so glad. I, get, I got up every morning to watch sunrise. Partly because I'm an old guy and, you know, you can't sleep. <laughs> <clears throat> this particular school is up by the lake. And uh, I think there's 1,200 kids in this school. We are going to, I think this is one of the ones we assess. We, all, we also do assessment for future work. So we, there's schools that we're going to go to, we're going we're gonna to put Bibles in. And uh, they're, they're going to start a Bible club here, which they've never done before. So we're pretty excited about that. But there's a huge cholera epidemic. And in this particular school, not one kid was sick from the cholera. It, they say, it says it passed over because they have clean water. And so, but they said in other schools that don't have water, there was cholera and kids have gone quarantined and kids are in hospitals because it's, you know, it's a very contagious uh, sickness. Because of Freddie, because all the water is con contaminated, you know, it was a huge epidemic. Their medical uh, services were already stretched. Their, you know, the, the funds that they have for those things. So every single place where we have put a borehole, there was zero cholera. They call it Palibe. Not one case. So you talk about the prevention of cholera. There it is. And these kids are just so happy. And we're up by the lake, so you might as well go check it out, right? What a beautiful lake. Come on. Yeah, yeah Lake Malawi. And so that says Venice Beach. I go, are you kidding me? we got to go to Venice Beach in Lake Malawi. <laughs> For all you who don't know, I'm from Venice Beach. So I go, you, this is an amazing place. It's kind of fun. Oh, this is actually a different spot. This is the inside of the men's quarters. And that's what it looks like. Those are mosquito nets and those are cots. And uh, 
you can get trapped in those mosquito nets. I was so sick one night, I almost didn't get out, man. I mean, I just out in the nick of time. I'm so grateful. I would have just puked all over myself and been terrible. But I'm so glad I made it out. Uh, this is going places. Uh, there's actually another row of people in the back there. <laughs> you can't see them all. But to get to places like this and to celebrate water and life, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. I'm going to read you a couple from my journal, if you don't mind. What do you say to that? All right, let me read you a couple things just to let you know. And then I got one special thing at the very end of this that is going to blow your mind. Let's see. Yeah, I'll save that. All right, so this is important. I'm just going to read you a few things. So every one I go to, I write down. We all do a Chris did a bunch of dedications, and Reed does some. So we have different people doing them. That's how we're able to see so many. But I like to, to get some firsthand examples of what water means and the benefits that it has. And so in this particular case, we're getting safe water. There was an outbreak of cholera, but now there's no waterborne sickness. So we can't even begin to appreciate what that looks like in a village like that who suffered their entire life and for generations with waterborne sickness every single year. And they said they, they would go with their family two and five times a month to the clinic. And this is important for later on, but the, that costs you money to go. You either take a bike taxi or you walk there, and then there's med medical purchases, and then there's a recovery period. So you're talking about misery upon misery, and money is scarce, so they said they would, they would walk. And they say we got water from a dirty river, sick often, clinic six kilometers away, take motor taxis, cost you 2,500 to 5,000 quatches per person. They go to the clinic three times a month. Now they only go for malaria, and there's no cholera here, even though they said someone died on the other side of the mountain. So the health benefits are incredible. Let's see if this helps. Oh, you're going to love this. In many of the places we went to, the wives told us that they were beaten by their husbands because they'd be gone for so long getting water. These women are getting up 2 and 3 in the morning, going to get water, coming back, and getting beaten by their husbands because they're suspected of extramarital affairs. So I asked them, are you having extramarital affairs? They go, no. <laughs> so he said, but we were beaten by their husbands, and now there's peace because when we were late with the water, we were welcome with slaps. Then they said, we've never had clean water. We go to the clinics two or three times a month. So one of the themes is the, the benefits of clean water, saving money. So I said, what do you do with all this money you save? So one guy said, in this particular village, we buy oil and fish twice a week. I bring it to sell it in our village. We can buy soap, clothes for our kids. We can pay for school fees. Uh, the one guy, the chief of this particular village said, we do team farming now. We use the money to buy fertilizer, and we work together so we can have a better harvest, and we use our extra money that we save from going to clinics to send all of our kids to school. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? So they said before the borehole, 30% of girls would go to school, and they would suffer from diarrhea and they'd miss school, and it would take two to three weeks to recover, but now 80% of our girls go regularly to school. Come on. Here's one of my favorites. The lady who's a treasurer of a water community in Kaliati 2 village says, now we're living the life we could only dream about. Could you imagine? This woman said, we are living the life we could only dream about. We have healthy kids. We're sending our kids to school. Our husbands don't beat us anymore. We have extra money for businesses and to buy things. Food is better. Hygiene's better. Our little kids can go to preschool. And all of our children are going to school. Can you imagine? Unbelievable. In one of the villages, the lady said, yeah, the husbands used to beat us, but they don't beat us anymore. And now we never even quarrel. And I said, wow, I need water at my house. <laughs> Uh, 
And because we've been putting these boreholes in schools, we get just complete testimonies all the time from different headmasters of these schools. And this one uh, school here, they said that at first we had more boys than girls, but now we have more girls, girls than boys because in teaching the girls, we're building the future. In their particular school zone, there's 14 schools, he says, we're number one in all subject the girls are doing as well as boys and even better. The top students in standard four and five are both girls. And he says, when there's no water, girls can't come to school. We had 133 girls, and now we have 177, just because of water. You have an amazing increase academic performance. Literacy is a huge problem. They say, you know, boys have like 70%, girls are 40%. It's not because girls are stupid, it's just that girls can't go to school. Access to water allows girls to go to school. They're even doing better than the boys in many cases, typical, right? As soon as you educate, how, how can you learn to read unless you learn to read at school? Right? Unless you have access to a book. So we've cured dropout problem, we we cured literacy problems, we cured academic cured academic performance problems just with putting a borehole in school. Boys and girls can come. Attendance is up uh, considerably in every school that we put a borehole. In this one place it said we're gonna build houses. Everyone said they're gonna and so I asked them, who's gonna build houses? Because you got you got water there. You already saw some of the bricks, right? They go, we're all gonna do it. We're all gonna make ten thousand bricks. And oh, and this one here, the la the lady said they're beaten five to seven times a week for being away from home so long. Can you imagine? Thank you, honey. That's another one. Husbands would beat us a couple times a week. But now we're not beaten anymore. <laughs> and we can bathe two to three times a day. Wow. Think that makes women happy? <laughs> women are telling me they're bathing in a handful of water like this, just like this. This is they're bathing like this. They can't wash clothes, can't wash their dishes, can't wash the kids. And they're going, you know, if my kid's dirty, he comes out, I just pour a bucket of water on them. We can bathe two and three times a day. Women get giddy, they laugh about it. It's so funny. Is they all lined up. Just joking about how many times they can take a bath every day. And we have water committees, which we're uh, constructed. These water committees are designed, and these people will be trained to maintain the boreholes. So we have a whole system in place. It takes a little bit longer than most charities, but we're concerned that they have water for a long time. And we visited boreholes that have been in existence for 20 years under our protocols. They're still working. That's what we want. We want generational change. So that requires a village committee formation and we're putting six women on it and four men because women are primary water harvesters and are most concerned about collecting water so why not empower them so in every case this is the first time any woman has ever been elected to a leadership position in the village and they're really happy to take that responsibility and to make sure that the the boreholes are, are taken care of there's more I'm not done yet I can read it. Okay, again, four to five times a month, someone is sick in every family, but now no more sickness. It says Sangalala. That means happy. Sangalala. Say it with me. Sangalala. Okay, you can say that now. It says water was so far away, but now we can do farming. We do gardens. Our families are stronger. All of our children go to school. Before the borehole, uh, girls were 40%. Now they're 100%. Boys are 60% 60 going to school before the borehole. Now they're 100%. Okay? We've, one of the, the major problems in Malawi is dropout. They have the highest dropout in southern Africa. But in every place where we put a borehole, what happens? More kids are going. Retention rate is high. Dropout is down. Academic performance has increased. What? From a thing of water? You kidding me? So in this one particular school... Uh, what we found out this year is that you don't just go from grammar school to high school. You have to pass a national test to determine if you're qualified to go to high school. Okay? So if you pass at a minimal level, you'll go to a local day school, which means you go, you walk, and you come back. If you do pretty good, you can go to a district boarding school. If you do really good, you go to a national boarding school, which has a low cut. They're better, and they have a low cut rate in tuition. 
So every kid is trying to hard not only to graduate, but to get into high school and then to get into the district boarding school or the national school. So in this one school, uh, they told us that they had, <clears throat> they're expecting three learners to go to national school. They're, they're now the teachers are excited because kids are coming, they're studying harder, they come to school more regularly, that because they understand their students, they believe that they're gonna have three that are going to national schools, and their very first girl in the history of the world, they expect to go to the national level. Come on. How about that? Another school, they said they were seventh in academic performance, and now they are number one in the district. Number one in the district. And they said we're planning to mold 200,000 bricks to make a second block of classrooms. They had a, a meeting with the community. The whole community is invested. They're all excited about it. They are going to mold 200,000 bricks. Can you see it? Yeah. I can see it. It's going to happen. Last year, when we went to Nanyanje School, we're gonna, they said we're going to make 120,000 bricks. We're thinking, all right. We went this year. We got to walk on top of these mountains of bricks. I probably got some pictures somewhere of these bricks. Show the Jesus film. Uh, this, was a, this was a church that was made from borehole water, 30,000 brick church. They molded them themselves. And we, look at the size of this thing. There was no structure in this area. This is also a school that, uh, that has over 200 kids come to this. We went there for a church service, celebrating Jesus. We had a little choir up there. Chris is there. Then we had a little lunch afterwards. Probably had some chicken and corn and some greens and doing Jesus style on a little mat. And this lady, Jacinta, was featured in our full-length documentary that the French did in 2016. It's on our website, uh, Road to Pirilongue, which is this is. So this is uh, 2016, uh, seven years later. So she said, hey, you haven't been over to my house. You should come over. And I go, okay. So we walked all the way over, which is quite a distance. And this is her daughter and her new husband molding bricks who are going to make a house for themselves. They just got married, and they're, they're close to where they grew up. This is Jacinta's house. But that house in the background is now made of bricks. When we first met her, it was made of straw and mud. Okay, they're living in grass houses. Now they can make houses made of bricks. And I was telling Chris that in this area, I'm known as the bone doctor. I don't think he believed me. I was there for a whole month, and I was looking for the boneless child. So I'd always count their ribs. And that the third rib is like the funny bone. That's the one I'm looking for, right? So I always check their little arms, and I check their ribs, and pretty soon they're on the ground rolling around and checking them all, right? So <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were there at Jacinta's house, and her husband came running and said, hey, I heard the bone doctor was here. <laughs> I had to come see him. It was so funny. I go, are you kidding me? Wow, it was so hysterical. But in this particular area, they were getting uh, water from a hole with frogs in it, and there was another pit where water seeped in. It was just cloudy and, and, and milky. We call that the water hole, the white holes. But in this particular place, you can see bricks in the background right there. They continue to make different structures. That's a little house. That's, you, see, you see how they used to live right there with the little straw and, and sticks. Uh, you can see that there. This is some of her daughters who are growing up with clean water. Okay, Seven years now, clean water. Look at them. Tell me about it. Look at that sunset. Showing Jesus film. That's a sunrise. <laughs> All right. So this place, the, and this one I was reading, I'll go back to that. It says the, gradu uh, the graduation rates are going to be great. I'm telling you, we're going to have a high rate of learners that will be selected for secondary school. So here's teachers now excited about the job they're doing. And 
generally speaking, the places that we've gone to have been very sacrificial, very difficult for us even to get to. We're whining about how hard it is for us to get there. And there's teachers living out there who are riding bikes to get there from great distances, can't get there in the rain. Uh, so they're really excited about their efforts now to produce students that will be able to go to high school. This particular place, the women say we're so happy to be on the committees. First time women have been elected by the community for leadership. We're able to do chores. Water's close by. We're doing more farming. Our harvest is better. We can now feed our children before they go to school. <laughs> kids go to school on time, and kids have time to play. Can you imagine? Kids have time to play. In this particular case, they said, uh, many of our children go to school now, almost 100%. Very few kids went to school, but now they go 100%. And we save at least 15,000 kwacha a month from not going to the clinic. We use the extra money to buy chickens. We eat better, food tastes better. In another village we went to, they said, we're buying goats. We're buying livestock with our extra money. So what you see is an immediate rise in economic development and interest. Whew. All right, a couple more before I get to the good part. Huh? This isn't even the good part. Stay tuned. So at Mbawa Primary School, in 2021, they had 150 students. This year, they have 412. So last year when I went, they had 355. They got up 412, which is almost triple, which means triple the amount of kids that are going to school in just three years, okay? And so we're gonna, exceed, we're gonna see this kind of growth continue, all right? We've already seen uh, development in terms of brick making in two different places. And this particular place, they told me last year when we were there, we're gonna make another classroom. Two classrooms, actually. And we went there and saw it. They actually did it. They made like 50,000 bricks. They had two classrooms fully made. They still needed to do the floor. They're already meeting in the one, even though the floor is like broken bricks. And we're gonna put what we call in there a Blossom Project, which is a changing room for girls. Because now there's so many girls coming to this school that every month, you know, girls have biological need, which will confine them to the house unless they have a place where they can change and be clean and have water and take care of, of their business because we want them to stay in school. What do you say? Yeah. So we went and visited this, this particular school. They got 209 girls right now, three, 203 boys. There's a significant increase in girl learners. But this is our camp right here. And this is sunrise, and I thought it was so amazing because the, the rays are shining down on bricks. You see this pile of bricks? This is one of those churches I said that we are going to rebuild. All right? And so we've already helped them purchase bricks, and they, they're bringing them from a local guy. So we're helping the local people make them. We're helping the local people bring them. I said, are we, are we paying the church workers to help do this? They go, no, these are all volunteers. They're doing this because they want to invest in their own church. They want to make to rebuild it. I go, okay, that's even better, right? So I think it's 20,000 bricks that we help purchase for them, but they're going to they're gonna get the cement, they're going to get the roof, they're going to do the whole thing. So we're, we're helping a little bit. So then we went to a school called Nanyanje School, and this is the first of our, our Blossom projects. So this is a girl changing room. All right, and this is changing lives right now, ladies and gentlemen. So because there's so many girls coming right now and because of the nature of God's creation, we want to help keep them in school. So we went and checked it out. They're working diligently on it. Those bricks are a part of the 120,000 bricks that they molded over the course of this entire year, and it's being used here. So those are handmade bricks and hand-burnt. Uh, let's see. Can I get to go? There we go. Uh, they're working away on it. We, we did go back and do a grand opening, but that's Reed. He's on the board of Waterways for Africa. This is uh, 70,000 handmade bricks, and they're put in a pile like this so they can burn them like a kiln, and then they turn red, and then, of course, they're, they're more durable. So you can see the school in the background. 
This is a pile of 50,000 bricks, all right? So they got the amount they, wanna, they, they make, and now they're going to turn those into classrooms and teacher housing. You see how high up it is. It's kind of dangerous being up that high. You have to be careful. So we roll in here, and this is a classroom, right? Do they need structure? Yeah. Are they going to do it? They're going to do it themselves. So we come in to, to take a, a picture of what's going on. Here's the, here's the classroom. Now, the chalkboard has writing on it, and it's in Chichewa, their language. So I say, what does the chalkboard say? And it's a teaching about the Christian responsibility for the elderly. Are you kidding me? So I go back, I take a closer picture, and you can see it up top, it says BK, if you can see that, which is what? Bible knowledge. So they are teaching Bible knowledge to this group, which is probably at least fourth grade. It could be less, okay? Because at fifth grade, they change to English. Okay, so we know it's fourth grade or lower, all right? That becomes important. But what I want you to see here is a teacher, you can't see them there very well, you know, on my phone they're better, sitting around with these kids, having a discussion about the Christian concern for the elderly. Did you learn that in fourth grade? Did you ever learn that? No. Did you even learn that in church? So what's happening here? This is like a discipleship center. Each school that we can resource becomes a discipleship training center. We're going to have 31 schools. We're going to have 31,000 kids any day now, okay? <laughs> Resourced. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? So there's our sunrise on my bricks. I'll break one or mega bricks. Can you imagine? Who would want to sleep through that? And you want to get up and see that. I couldn't take enough pictures of it. So the second school I was telling you about in Bawa, which is this one, where they've gone from 150 to 412, they had a pass rate before of 35%. So how many kids passed the national exam that allowed them to go to secondary school? He says now it's 65%. 65%. And they've moved up from seventh in their zone to third. And we expect them to do better than that, but they're moving up in terms of their position in their zone of 14 or 15 different schools. So they've got 209 girls in this particular school, and that's the girl outhouse. Okay? This is the outhouse that 209 girls use. What do you say? You know what? We're going to change the world here. Can you see it? There's no obstacles. It's a level highway. We are going to make a changing room latrine at that school. Are you excited about that? Yeah. We're going to change the world, ladies and gentlemen, right here. You heard it here. You can see it right now. It's going to be beautiful. Here's the bricks that they made. They told us they're going to make, like, I don't know, 50,000 bricks or something. But they've already used it for their two classrooms. I don't know if I have a picture of it, <clears throat> but it's, it's over there. That's Brittany, who is an intern from Texas A&M. That's uh, Chad and Mandy's daughter. Mandy went with me to Africa many years ago, multiple occasions when she was part of my college group. And now her daughter, second generation going, loves it. It's been fundraising for since she's been nine years old for water. Actually, she's gone with us a couple times, but this year she, she's a junior at, at college, and she really wants to help us develop the Blossom Project. So uh, there she is in front of the girls' bathroom facility. All right, here's the place I want to get to here. Are you ready for the good part? All right, so this is back at Nanyanje School. Okay, we've learned a lot, haven't we? All right, so... At this school where we went to celebrate the first of any kind of hygiene facility for girls, and the fact that they went from 755 to 863 kids, and many of those increase in attendance are girls, 
Uh, this is a big celebration. You can see the amount of kids there. Eight different classes, one to eight. And each class did a skit. So we're all hanging out. And uh, each group would come up and do a little skit. And then we'd say, you know, translate for us so we'll know what's going on here. And this one set of girls marched in. They march in. They do their little song. They're all cheerful. And I said, you know, what are they saying here? So I asked the guy next to me, and he says, well, here's, here's a translation. Do you want it? Okay, these, this is fourth grade girls. How old you, how old you, how old you in fourth grade? Ten? Ten-ish, right? Yeah, somewhere around ten. These are ten-year-old girls. Some parents, when they have a girl child, think that they have a means of earning income by telling us girls to stop schooling and start prostitution. But us girls at Nanyanje have refused to that because we want to continue our education. We thank Water Wells for Africa for giving us water and a changing room. Now, girls, now we walk proudly for having a changing room at Nanyanje School. Viva Nanyanje! <laughs> So this, this fourth grade girl class is singing. We're going to deny being sold into prostitution by our parents because we have water in a changing room at school from Water Wells for Africa. And we will continue our education. Can you imagine a 10-year-old girl singing their gratitude because they got water in a changing room and that's the focus of it? Could you ever imagine that in all your born days? You would never think of that. So I'm thinking, wow, water. <laughs> OK. Changing room, changing lives. So I asked our local guy, who is the supervisor of this, you know, what, what's going on here? I mean, this is like an eye-opening revelation about the importance of water. And he goes, yeah, that's the background of the song is in that particular culture. Their girls undergo an initiation ceremony where they begin menstruating. The girls are taught things like encouraging them to sleep around with men, even older men, and challenging them not to say no to any man who would sleep with them. Some parents encourage the girls with the name of getting an income as they do prostitution. So it's an accepted practice up in here, but because of schools, because girls are coming, because of water, because they're learning, they're seeing a bigger picture of the future, they're going, hey, we're 10 years old, we're not doing that. Come on. What do you say? And they're going to learn <laughs> that Christian concern for the elderly in the BK class. So I want to do some more research on that. And of course, it's frowned on by the government and other civil uh, uh, society organizations who are discouraging that, of course because of the spread of HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases. So uh, he's going to do some more research on that for us. And I said, you know, that took a lot of courage for these young girls to come public with such a dirty cultural secret, because you got a whole row of chiefs right there. you got parents that are here. And you got 10-year-old girls just going, no, we're not doing this anymore. Can you imagine? for these little girls to come public with that. And I said, uh, you know, I want Fexton to go back and to talk to the headmaster about what's being done at the school to prevent child prostitution and encourage girls to stay in school for the future. I mean, they're committed to that. What do you say? Can you imagine? Look at this, all these kids. This is a whole row of chiefs over there, OK, and adults. And the little girls coming out and singing that song. And my, my other ones, they're just so grateful. So this changing room, we're thanking our donor for this. A bunch of girls there. You can see some of the chiefs over here on the side. <laughs> uh, it's not finished yet. They're going to stucco it. Still got some work to do. I just got a report back from Fexton, so I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Come back in to Blantyre. We'll go to the Foursquare Church. That's Davis and Reed. Uh, one of our uh, key team leaders. This is the Deaf Church. So after that church, Chris and I went to the Deaf Ministry Church. It's so cool, so fun. 
and showed the Jesus film. We had two translators there just all day long doing all kinds of stuff. I got to learn a few words. We got to meet the translator. So we're going to continue that relationship, what do you say, with these guys. We gave them a bunch of Bibles, which we're really grateful for. And uh, nobody reaches out to them. And then the next week, we still have some work to do. We went to another school. This particular school had one Bible. It was a Gideon Bible. And I said, we're going we're to fix that. What do you say? Can you see it? I see it now. We're going to make a difference right there. Look at all these kids. We're going to make sure that they have everything they need to learn Bible knowledge. Whew. All right. So at the very beginning of this session, we talked about some of the things that uh, the di different uh, speakers talked about. One of the things that Randy said was his key verse for, for his, his, his ministry, right? He said it was uh, 2 Timothy 2.15. If he's going to be a pastor, he should go to school, he should learn stuff. And I thought, you know what? My scripture is this one here, Revelation 3, 2. And I thought back, as, as I am going through this year and going to all these places and thinking about the impact that we're able to have through all of these various projects that we are doing together collectively as a church, it is a church project, isn't it? And God reminded me about this scripture that he spoke to me almost 50 years ago. When I was a little brand new Christian in Hawaii, just reading my King James Bible, you know, <laughs> praying to God, and just, you know, how things get illuminated. You know, there's, there's exegesis, which is the contextual and the history and the language. You want, you want to know what the author means, but there's little times when God just illuminates things and puts them in your heart as a deposit, right? And you tuck them away. So he goes, okay, you got to strengthen what remains. I go, okay, what does that mean? I don't know. I'm just young, right? <laughs> So I just tucked it away in my heart. And eventually, you know, it, it, would, it would, a little bell would ring every now and then. And when I'm filling out my paperwork to become a professional <laughs> a pastor, that was my verse. I wrote down that I'm going to strengthen what remains. And so I went back and reviewed this on this trip. And I thought, you know what? That's what we're doing here. There is an opportunity for us to pour into this educational system, help the, the, the uh, Department of Malawi education do what they're supposed to do. It's a part of the curriculum. We're not forcing any you know, Cinderella's ugly stepsister into a slipper here. You know what I'm saying? This is wide open door. And so he reminded me of this, and I go, wow, that was so long ago. And now it's like, I could, you know, you're seeing fruit from something that God placed in your heart. It's such a, you know, when you're just this little sapling, this little leafling coming out of the ground. And he says, you were not done. So for me, there's, he's saying, you're not finished, right, with what I've given you to do. Strengthen means to to turn into a certain direction with a decision that you make to do something, okay? To strengthen that, to confirm it. It's, a, it's an idiom, which really means to fix your face and to make a decision with emphasis upon the finality. So we have, as a church, this is a word to a church, okay? There's individual callings that we have, individual giftings that you have, and individual things that God calls you to do. But as a church, we also have a calling to do things that God has placed before us. And I think it's obvious what that is. Okay? So for us together, collectively, it's time for us really to take seriously the sense of urgency that God has placed before us to move forward with the projects that God has placed in our way. What do you say? If God has seen this from before the foundation of the world, it's up to us to wake up, smell the coffee, and go, hey, we got to put our hand to the plow. we got to make this thing happen. we got to be steadfast and make up your mind for what remains. So what remains is a part of the whole which remains or continues, the remnant, okay? There's a window here that if we miss this, we'll never have this opportunity again. Look what's happening here in America. 1962, 1963, the Supreme Court decided the Bible's an illegal and taboo book. Now look, look what they're teaching in our schools. 
look what's happening to America, look at our leadership, look what's going on. You can't, you can't look at the world right now and think that what's happening here is a good thing. So then it says to, to, to complete, which means to bring to completion, to give meaning to something, to carry through to the end, to accomplish it. So are we done yet? No, no we're not finished yet. We need to carry it out to the full. We need to accomplish this. And we're going to do it, right? Nothing in my way. And then 3.8. This is the word of the Lord to us. Believe it, ladies and gentlemen. I've set before you an open door which no one can shut. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Amen. I know that you're little. <laughs> okay? <laughs> How little are we? Does, does, does little amount to anything to God? <laughs> does it? God doesn't care about little. You got little, but you've kept my word. You haven't denied me. Amen. Amen. Kept my word. You haven't denied. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we come before you right now. <sighs> Lord, we're so grateful for what you managed to get done through us, through the, through the little you managed to make big. Lord, we want to honor you in all that we do. We see forward, Lord. We see the future that you've laid before us, not only as individuals, but as a corporate entity. And Lord, we just ask for your continued favor upon us as we move forward, Lord, that we would see greater and greater things, greater and greater fruit, a larger and larger tree, more branches, more birds, more little birds. We pray for all these places that we visited. We pray for the places we will visit. We pray for our future work. We pray, Father, that you would continue to find us trustworthy as we continue to move forward year after year after year like a tree planted by the rivers of water. We pray that even today, Lord, that we would commit ourselves, recommit ourselves, that we would repent of our failures and weaknesses and regrets. And Lord, that we would be on fire for you. Lord, that we would feel that sense of urgency. That we would sense what you're calling us to do with a, new, with a, with a newness. That we can be the blessing that you have seen for us. That we can be poured out for everything that you have called us to. And God, we just come before you right now, commit this season to you, and we commit the future to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Whew. Stand if you can. Let's worship Jesus, shall we? Is he worthy? Yes. He's worthy of everything. Somebody next to you, he's worthy. Tell somebody song of Lala. <laughs> that means I'm all happy. I would. 